Welcome to episode 77 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies, plus tips, apps, and gear. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg, and my co-host, as always, this week and every week is Warren Sklar. How are you doing, Warren? Hey, Dave. I'm doing good. Happy uh, Thursday. Thursday? Happy Thursday. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, two weeks Two weeks away from Christmas? Oh my God! I can't uh, believe where this 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 year is gone. I'm telling you, it's it's uh, fast. There was a one of the websites I was on had a countdown to Black Friday, and it was like 60 days of Black Friday, and I'm like, God, it's yeah. so far away, and it's like, you know, oh, no, it's, it's here, it's here, man, it's here, it's here. So. Um, we've got uh, some news of the day. We, uh, 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 we just had some breaking news that just came through uh, not uh, within the last uh, couple hours uh, as we uh, record this. So we're going to talk about that in a minute and lots of other news. Um, topics this week, uh, iOS 13.3. Wanted to talk a little bit about all the, not all, there's a lot of, a fair amount of changes that uh, occurred uh, with the update uh, that has occurred this past week. And then that happened on Tuesday. And then um, uh, we'll, uh, t- of course, crank through some tips and uh, uh, all kinds of other fun stuff. We always have fun talking about iOS and everything else related to this stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Um, so the first uh, story, as I, as I said, this was breaking. It just uh, broke about, uh, oh gosh, about, uh, looks like about three hours ago. Um, was that for, yeah, no, I mean, an hour ago, actually. Uh, I'm looking at Pacific time. I'm in central time. Um, Apple will avoid iPhone tariffs, and as the U.S. and China have re- are tentatively reaching a trade deal. So, of course, we don't get pol- pol- political here on this show, but uh, I wanted to mention this because uh, uh, th- uh, Apple was speaking in, in a note to investors that was shared by Bloomberg um, and the, and their West B- Wedbush Securities analyst uh, uh, said that the new tariffs had had we're going to probably add about approximately 150 dollars per f- iphone for the holiday season which uh yeah that's a lot <laughs> so i guess trump gave uh apple a early pr- christmas present and and looks like things are going to get signed and then apple got uh got waived to this and i think they're gonna you know have a tentative trade deal in place uh uh soon for everything so what'd you think of this well, I'm uh, checking my stock app as we speak. Uh, uh, I didn't even check the stock. Yeah, so after hour trading is uh, about half a point, which is uh, which is good. Yeah. So 268. Uh, yep. Yeah, so I'm assuming yeah we 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 have a little bit of that stock. So um, hopefully by tomorrow we'll be uh, able to quit all our jobs and uh, and. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if it'll go that far, but. Uh, it can't uh, hurt. It's not going to hurt it. It, it. Yeah, it can't hurt at all. So uh, we'll see uh, how that goes. Um, and um, also uh, in the news was uh, uh, the Apple Card. Uh, oh, actually, did you have another story that you put on there that, that, that we wanted to talk about? Or didn't, uh, um, I didn't. I put a story s- under. Uh, actually, they're not full stories. They're just kind of amendments to current stories. So. Um, as we go through them, I'll kind of add a little bit to some of the things we're talking about already. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, let's uh, go right to the Apple Card. Apple Card is offering a 6% daily cash, cash back on any purchase uh, until uh, December 31st. So if anybody was thinking about getting that Mac Pro for $50,000, you know, go run out and buy it because you're going to get a nice big chunk of change back on that. And, and I, I, if you even have that limit, which I would be kind of surprised unless you're, you know, was really valued uh, to get that kind of limit. But uh, that is kind of cool. But uh, they did add an amendment to it because uh, when they announced this, you know, obviously people had already made their purchases a couple of days before uh, this was announced on the 10th, which was uh, two days ago. Uh, so if anybody uh, go ahead, you uh, you put that addendum in uh, about uh, about that. Well, it's not official as far as I know, but I um, in my oh, own. You, oh, it's your, oh, it was, it was your experience. I'm this sorry. is yes, my personal ahead. experience. So um, it's fine. What I did was uh, I, I bought a MacBook Pro 16 on the fourth, uh, which is um, was about a week before the six percent uh, deal. But they also had a. Uh, at that point, they had the two hundred dollar gift certificate, but I did not do that because um, I bought it under the student uh, discount for for my child. In any case, yeah. um, so I, I I put it on the card and I got my three percent, 
And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to ask because technically I could return the laptop and buy it again and get to 6%. Right. Right. So I was nice through the chat and uh, eventually I got through to uh, uh, Ashley Goldman Sachs. And, uh, you know, I, right. uh, within one or two sentences, uh, they said, yeah, we'll give you the other 3%. Um, you'll see it coming up in, in a day. So the point is, if you bought something, I believe after the fourth, uh, you're in some kind of window, according to them. Um, and if you bought it from Apple, they'll you know talk to somebody at Coleman and they'll they'll hook you up. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, well, let's uh, let's uh, that's a good deal. So um, it, and I think only if it, it covers only hardware. So it's not like software or anything like that. So you have to purchase. Uh, uh, MacBook Pros and, and iPhones, iPads, uh, AirPods. I believe AirPod Pros is covered on that. So uh, get that 6%. Um, and then the other thing they they, they announced uh, this past week was uh, new uh, monthly installment payments that you can make on the, on the, uh, on the Apple Card. Um, this is an interest-free loan, basically. And how this works is uh, you basically make the purchase uh, of an iPhone, um, on the Apple card and then you'll pay it over a period of 24 months interest free. But uh, the caveat to that versus the Apple trading program is the fact that you have to pay it off in 24 months or you, uh, you can pay it ahead of time if you want to. But uh, uh, we have a link in the show notes here from Mac Mac rumors about this. And uh, it just gives you all kinds of uh, information relates to that uh, installment. What'd you think of this? Yeah, I knew they were going to do it and I kept reading about it. Um, it's a good deal if you want to, um, you know, get a iPhone and pretty much get it for free. I guess during well, not free. Yeah. You got to pay it off, but it's a right. it's a good interest free uh, interest free loan. So that's that's good. I'm wondering if they're going to get rid of the other program they have then, because they also the have the program. Not to trade them, but they were using another credit. Oh, card. Uh, Bar- Barclays. Barclays. I have the card still. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder I if they're going to phase that one out. Eventually, because you know, well, maybe, maybe not. I guess not everybody's going to get the Apple Card, but um, yeah, right. good deal, good deal. I, I might think about it for the uh, next phone I get. Yeah, no, nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the trading plan. I like trading every 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 uh, every year, so um, we'll just see how that goes. Um, and then um, uh, other stories that caught my eye: uh, Apple Watch is so huge it eclipsed and peaked the iPod. This was in uh, uh, this was an Apple Insider um, with the uh, with the AirPods Pro. I've been evaporating into the holiday shopping season because it's been uh, it's been cranking out the uh, uh, the wearables uh, through uh, this this year, and it's just pretty pretty incredible. Um, and it's uh, it, it's just incredible. And seeing this uh, says uh, analysts had helped and helped help them include that the Apple Watch uh, overtook the historic peak iPod, which occurred in the fourth quarter of 2007, four billion dollars for 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 Apple Watch. And of course, they don't give us straight revenues of what they sell as far as the watches go, but uh, um, this is pretty incredible. I mean, it's just it, it's just exciting for me, where you and I both being Apple enthusiasts and to see this kind of a thing be happening is just, just awesome. Yeah, and I heard a couple of people talking about this too, but you know, you and I could, you know, certainly know that when the Apple Watch first came out, the first maybe two or three years, um, it, it was hard to find somebody with an Apple Watch on. It was, uh, you know, not really in the wild. And, you know, when you saw somebody with an Apple Watch, it, it's a conversation starter. Right. You know, you would talk to them about it because, you know, not a lot of people had it. Now it's it's almost hard not to find somebody uh, with the watch on, especially like if you go into uh, you know we travel, we go into cities a lot, you know, in the, in the vacation yeah. on, on a cruise, things like that. You just you know, right, right, right. It, they're just everywhere. So um, you know, they made the they made the pricing competitive, uh, you know, at least with the um, series three nowadays um where you could get it for like the 199 on black friday right um you know and and there's another news story today today or yesterday there was one about a guy who uh was on a boat or he fell in a, the water somewhere and he said right. hey hey yes lady um I'm, i need help and they called the police and you know people see that on a you know NBC Nightly News, and they're like, "Hey, for two hundred bucks, you know, or or even more, if I want a nicer one, why wouldn't I do this?" So it's it's right. it's there. I mean, it it 
it proved itself uh, to be uh, uh, something that the, the masses want. That's a great thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Looks like I had another article in here, but I think it's the same article, but it's on 9 to 5 Mac. I think it's just relating to the AirPods. And it just, I guess we could just talk about the AirPods briefly. Um, I did a presentation on the AirPods in my Apple user group uh, on Tuesday. And uh, just, 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 a, just going through it and just realizing how phenomenal they are. I'm wearing them as I talk to you. Um, and I think they're just absolutely amazing. Um, um, in fact, I have the, that's probably why I'm having a uh, weird listening because I have noise cancellation turned on and I shouldn't have, I should put on transparency so I can hear my voice, which now I can. Wow. What a concept. Uh, uh, cause I had uh, noise cancellation on it, but I, in this, in, yeah, in this instance, I really wouldn't want the, that on because I want to be able to hear myself as well as my surroundings. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Apple AirPods, uh, pro are just selling like crazy. They're, they're hard to find I'm hard to find a lot of places are sold out. Yeah, my uh, a little elf told me there might be a pair of iPod uh, uh, or AirPod Pros underneath the tree for me. Um, That's awesome. So I'm excited for that. Uh, you know, my my biggest issue right now is what I'm going to do with the old AirPods, which I have in my ears right now, uh, and I have the second gen. Yeah. I'm the second gen. I might pull a. Uh, no, the funny thing is, nobody in my family wants them. My wife doesn't want them. My son doesn't want them. He has yeah. his Beats Pro. Uh, I sold my yeah. series, my first gen ones, back to somebody for like fifty bucks or sixty. But you know, I might pull a Tim yeah. Cook and just keep them. You know, throw them in my laptop bag. Um, because yeah, I also have to I'm going to have an extra spare. I've got the original ones, and but they're really old, and I don't think the battery is as good as it used to be. But I started looking at it because I was thinking about throwing it up on like Facebook Marketplace or eBay or something. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, who, who the hell's going to want my earpads with all my earwax and grind? And <laughs> I know you got to and, and cleaning it. I mean, there's ways of cleaning it, but you got to be careful because they um, they say no liquid in these AirPods. So. Yeah, but somebody bought mine. That to, yeah, I don't know. That that's I, I didn't ask questions, but somebody bought my, my yeah. old ones. But I guess if I clean them good enough and show the pictures, they see what it looks like and uh, go from there. I guess. Yeah. But the, the, they're they're saying all overall the uh, the wearables, which includes AirPods, four billion. What that's what that number was. So pretty amazing. They say it's um. Uh, weren't they saying the the wearables are. Uh, in in the class of a Fortune 500 company of its own, if you just priced out the word, that, that's, yeah. they used to say that that the wearable yeah. is its own com. If it was its own company, it would be way up there in like the top Fortune something something. Yeah, so we'll keep. I'll keep the link to both the the nine to five Mac and Mac with rumors uh, articles we were talking about in the show notes, but. Uh, Yep. Awesome stuff. And then um, last story, I got kind of put it in here instead of us putting it into the topic that we were going to talk about in a little bit here on iOS 13.3 is uh, iOS 12, 12.4.4 update is out. This is um, o, uh, OS X Daily uh, reported this, and um, this was uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, and as we record this, and uh, they did release this for all, all the older devices you know, that are not eligible for iOS 13. Uh, which includes the iPhone 6 and the, the 5S and any of the really older uh, models and the, on the older iPads that are still running iOS 12. And if you, if you ask me, I think that's pretty awesome. Apple is actually allowing, uh, they're actually going to, they're continuing to support six-year-old devices. And, and plus, I mean, to, to do that is pretty, pretty unheard of. You know, take that Android, right? Yeah. I mean, and you know, being on the Facebooks and all that, you see a lot of people in the Apple group saying, you know, right. I, I have an iPhone 4 and Apple, the, the plant, what the, the whole plant obsolescence uh, argument. They're like, but that was a yeah. seven year old in the phone. Right. So you get, you get those people, but you know, at least for a phone that's fairly recent, it's going to get some updates on it. I wouldn't suggest having one of those, but you know, if you do, at no, least. No, <laughs> I wouldn't either, but. At least they have giving uh, they're they're giving the folks who still are on the six and the six plus are probably the the biggest ones that people are still using. Um, uh, at least now they're 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 keeping things up to date for security, and that's the key because uh, you know security can be an issue. It really can, and uh, it's important to uh, to make sure that you stay on top of that. So uh, check that out for for that. So yep, um, for sure. All right. Any, anything else on that topic before we move on? Um, just that, uh, if anybody was interested, I think Best Buy has a 5S, uh, 
no contract thing for it was like 80 bucks if anybody's looking for one so <laughs> 5s <laughs> pretty much I, th- I think i i think i saw they were selling in 10s uh for 649 dollars no contract and, and uh you buy it outright so yeah it's not uh, bad it's, it's not 80 bucks but i mean if you're looking for it's not 80 bucks something for a kid or you know even once in a while your phone's yeah. in, in a shop and you want something in the drawer to pull out if if you need a phone but again i wouldn't recommend anything like that to anybody unless you want to gouge your eyes out with slowness but hey it's it's your yeah. phone yeah this is true so so let's uh, kick over and talk about iOS and iPad OS 13.3. A lot of the most of this focus in this uh, in this topic is going to be on iPhone, uh, but iPad has similar type of things and relates to it when it comes to the the, the bugs. Um, I, that was, it was released on Tuesday, and how ironic! I was doing my doing my class on Tuesday, and 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 it came out in the afternoon. I got to talk about it fresh that night, and then of course fumbled a little bit because it was still too new for me to be on top of what, uh, what there is going to be talking about, but I will talk about it on Saturday during our other meeting. So, um, but, um, lot, there was a lot of critical uh, updates, bugs, fixes in that. And we'll of course link to the show notes as far as, uh, how to, uh, what, what is in that updated list. Um, along with, we'll talk about some of the other updates that occurred. Um, uh, first off is, uh, they did, Apple did fix a critical bug in iOS 13.3 that allowed anyone to temporarily overwhelm and freeze an iPhone using airdrop. This was crazy. Um, and, uh, uh, I guess what, maybe you can explain a little better what, uh, what happened with that. Maybe, maybe not. I kind of saw what you saw. It was, and I don't know if no. anybody actually successfully did it, but researchers found a way where they could. Complete like even if you had well, I, I think you had to allow airdrop from anyone still, uh, and as long as you did that, then people could pretty much. They call well, yeah the, oh, the the story I heard it was make a, it freeze. It was a denial of service. They were calling it a, a DOS attack, or uh, pretty much because it pretty much clogged your phone up with the network and, and, and froze it up. So I, I threw I threw I threw a link in the show notes. It's through uh, iDrop News that that should help us along with this. Uh, um, yeah, basically, what is it? It was dubbed as a is kind of like a D- DOS uh, or a denial of service attack for for more for lack of a better term. Um, it uh, uh, luckily it only happens with, with AirDrop, and if and, and most people are smart enough not to have their AirDrop set to everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, not me. <laughs> But uh, you should. I, in fact, I, I think I just turned it on. I want to go back and turn it off because uh, I, I, I only time I want it on is when um, uh, when when I'm when I actually want to share it, get something shared with me. And really, you should you, you I'm, should I'm have on that turned only. off. I'm on contacts only, which is fine. Contacts only. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. That works too. Although I'd be, uh, you know, if you're bored and walk around in the city and just uh, you know want to see what's going on, just turn it on to everybody and see what happens. Oh yeah, the people are saying, "Oh, look at this phone!" Boop, boop, yeah, boop. Let's much. send, let's send you, send you that. So that that's really what that bug was. But you know what? That is a vulnerability. It really is, and uh, uh, you should uh, be aware of it. Uh, that uh, it should not be doing that. Uh, so that was one of the bugs, and um, that was fixed. And uh, the other thing was um, emoji stickers. You like emoji stickers in in text? I thought they're in the way whenever I would. Be texting i've never done that i think i played with a memoji i created my memoji when i was 13 first came out and that was about it okay so <laughs> in this in this go around in this go around because you could put these stickers in text messages if you want if you so choose uh, but this now with 13.3 apple did add an option to be able to turn that off if you don't want it on um, the word and the way to do that is you go into general and then you go into settings and then emoji is listed all the way at the bottom of that screen and then you just t- 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 tap the button to turn off um, emoji stickers. And once you do that, uh, it will no longer um, uh, it will no longer uh, show up in your e- emojis and just have the regular emojis. Um, other thing they added, and I'm not a big user of this, but I think that you know for those who have who are parents who have kids, um, using screen time to, to 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 restrict a lot of the screen time that's out there. Um, they added a new feature in screen time uh, uh, 
which was called uh, communication limits. And you, you put an article in the show notes because they just added this uh, today, actually, mm-hmm. uh, about there's a bug that the kids can get around it. What a surprise. The kids <laughs> have figured out how to get around something that they don't, the parents don't want. So go ahead and uh, tell people about that one. So the, the bug, so basically in screen time, you could set communication limits, which um, basically will allow you to restrict who they call or text or FaceTime uh, based on the settings. Um and you could restrict it by contacts and unknown people. Somehow the the system uses what contacts are in your iCloud contacts. Um, and if that iCloud contacts, if that contact is not in the iCloud contacts, but in your contacts on the yeah. phone, it will allow the kid to bypass it and, and basically, <laughs> um, you know, FaceTime and text and things like that. Apple saying... Well, that's kind of by design, you know, because we want you to use the iCloud contacts and to turn it on. And basically, they say to, to get by it right now, you go into on a kid's phone, you go into setting um, yeah. contacts, um, settings, a contacts, and make sure iCloud is set as a default. And that will kind of get it to always put that contact in the cloud. Um, but they're going to fix it. Um, I don't think this was the first time it's happened. I think there was another way yeah. that the kids got around it the last time of a different restriction. But whatever. It, it comes with the phone, and at least it's trying. So, Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's it's smart that, that they have it. Um, but let's see where this fix comes. Where are we going to come up with 13.3.1 now? I mean, That's what gosh. the article said. Yeah, most likely it will be in. 13.3.1, which uh, uh, I'm I sure. I see it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I, you, you, I think people are going to be amused to see my grid that I put together yeah, I in that. a minute about uh, about uh, about iOS. It just blows my mind, this this version going around here. So a couple other things that they add is updates. Um, you now can save an edited video clip. So if you're in, uh, if you've recorded a video and you want to go edit it, and remember before you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to save it as a separate clip. You'd have to just save it and then you'd have to revert back to it if you wanted to revert back to the previous version. Right. Well, now what you can do is if you click saved, it's going to give you an option to say, uh, save edit, edited video as a new clip, which is good. They should have, that, that should have been added. So I'm glad they added that. A um, couple of things. Also, the news app has been redesigned. You can now like and dislike articles at the bottom of the screen, which is cool. Uh, the stocks, you also now can see related stories. You never were able to do that before when you would go into the stocks. If you could use the stocks app and track your Apple stock, um, that's uh, that's something you can do as well. So uh, we'll have a show. We have a link in the show notes that uh, that's a support article giving you a whole full list of all the other things that were uh, addressed there. Not going to go through every single one of them. There were a couple of things that though, those are the ones that really stood out to me. Uh, and uh, a lot of the other ones are more techy. So it's not really necessary to add unless there's something you see in there that's in that support article that uh, stands out to you. Nothing. No, I, I kind of went through the same list and I don't see uh, the big okay. two. The big two obviously were the uh, was the, the the airdrop bug and the uh and the yeah. uh, screen time thing, I think, were the big newsmakers of this one. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's move on. And uh, speaking of iOS, uh, Apple, like I said, showed its love with iOS 12. So we talked about that, 12.4.4 is for the older devices. Um, we also want to mention that the HomePod uh, also has an update to 13.3. Uh, and uh, what the HomePod has added is, and then, did you notice it just updated itself? I didn't even have to do anything, did you? As far as updating like, um, it to 13.3? I, I manually did it. I don't know if I, it would have done it automatically, but because um, yeah, I went to go look, I went to go do it manually, and it was already done. So I was like, oh, "This is weird." No, yeah, um, it, it's a, a little bit, you know, a little strange thing uh, to tell you about that is uh, I'm on I'm no longer on beta at all on any of my devices. I'm like, there's I no, know this is like it's, you're it's, going through withdrawal already, aren't it, you? I've actually gone yeah. to the developer website and uh, and, and uh, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's no betas. So nothing. Even Catalina is gone. Yeah, you got nothing. It's all it's all release. I feel like the the pets out there. Yeah, but the HomePod. <laughs> I, I thought maybe because I was on iOS 13 something already, it would have done it. But now yeah. I I went into the Home app and I went into the update and I did it. But now it's yeah. asking me every time I ask uh, the HomePod to kind of do something, it says um, basically a message saying to set up. Um, it it could personalize it now that it recognizes who. What voices yeah. 
and it says go into your home app and um, and set up how to do the personalization, but I can't find it. So I got to go back in and try to find out where it's saying that. But at this point, if you did the update, that's the only thing I could see. Uh, there's two th- – actually, a few things are happening. One, I um, mm-hmm. I was using my phone um, uh, on, on my phone, on my iPhone, and I walked close to one of my AirPods uh, accidentally and yeah. it said, yeah, move a little closer to transfer this to the AirPod. Uh, the call, yeah. So it's doing it's doing things that I don't fully grasp how or the way to do it, but it is doing things out well, there. We've we've put you on a mission. You're going to have to get back to us, and that's going to be our next uh, one of our topics next time is the how how all these new things work on the HomePod. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe Siri will understand some of what I'm saying, and uh, I'll get back to you. Now, speaking of understanding, um, what the update did is uh, it improved the ability of the HomePod to recognize the voice profile of family members. So other family members, of course, they updated that and uh, when iOS 13 came out uh, to allow uh, family members to enable or disable their personal requests and fix an issue that could also prevent music playback from resuming on a stereo pair following a call. Because I, I have two iPod, uh, HomePods to my left and to my right that I use as a pair, so... Um, it's uh, so it's pretty cool. So, uh, got that link in the show notes for that update. And then uh, Watch OS uh, six point one point one came out. Nothing really eventful on that one. Um, what did you see on that? Did you see? I, I didn't see anything crazy uh, of as far as updates go on this one. No, and I was on the beta, obviously on that one before, so I probably wouldn't see much either. But I didn't see anything. Yeah. The update went fine. Uh, no problems with yeah. that too. Um, you know, it, it seems snappy. Um, uh, you know, with all the, with all the updates with the, uh, the, I, uh, with the iOS and, and, uh, iPad and OS, the watch has been pretty f- stable throughout the, the 13 yeah, process. I, I think. That. Yeah. It's, I mean, I haven't, I've heard some people complaining here and there, but you no, know, I've been really kind of happy with the updates on, on the watch or at least the functionality since, uh, since uh, yeah. 13 came out. So that, that's good news. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, very good news. And then lastly, uh, tvOS, was ne- which is never eventful as far as anything <laughs> when it comes to updates. I don't even um, do it. I mean, it just, I just let it do it by itself. And uh, uh, it added a new useful new setting that designed to let you change the main batter interface on the, in the Apple TV app from what's to what to watch to up next, which displays content showing that you've already watched they're already watching rather than show suggestions. So there's just basically nothing. Like there's some minor buck fixes. Yep. Um, so, but we're using ours, you know, watching the Apple TV shows. So at least we're using it. I have before the Apple TV shows. I I can't tell you the last time I used it. So at least yeah. now we are. Well, that's good. You're not using it for Disney Plus. Uh, I am not using it for Disney Plus. I am. Um, I have found a way to watch The Mandalorian um, somehow. Through the magic of through the magic of Disney, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know. I, yeah, we probably shouldn't even discuss that. <laughs> uh, and I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, I have no but, idea what you're uh, talking about. I don't know what you're talking about either. So, um, so uh, finally, with this upgrade, I I, uh, I tweeted this out earlier today, and I wanted to. I'm going to have this in the show notes. Up. Uh, this was a grid that I put together for my Apple user group a meeting. I talked about. I talked on Tuesday, and I wanted to kind of. And I saw nobody do this, and and I didn't get any comments on it. But I'm hoping if you see anything like this, I like to. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, feedback at in touch with ios.com. Tell me what you think uh, what, about this craziness that that's happened uh, as far as upgrades go. And I've talked about this in previous episodes, but this grid really gives the big picture, doesn't it? Um, 13.09, it came out in September 19th. Then 13.1, what was it? That was uh, five days later. And then you had 13.11, which was three days later. Or was that two days? <laughs> three days. And then so on and so forth. 13.12, 13.13. There's 10 of them, right? Yeah, 10 There's updates. There's 10 of them total. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. And we've talked um, about so this. Even, yeah. And it's, yeah. It's like the kind of thing where you, you know, where I used to get on my family and, and friends about updating their devices. You know, when a new update came out, I, I, I gave up about a month ago. I'm like, you guys are on your own. You'll figure it out. It's too yeah. Much. So, it's I mean, the, the updates will, uh, will end up pushing eventually. So, you have to. You have to get them done. So, um, and that's the thing is they don't aren't forced. You know, when when whenever I'm aware of, and I'm sure you as well, because beta test is we mainly force the updates anytime 
we're, we're, we, we find out that there's a new update. But most, most of us that are listening out there probably just let it do it on its own and it'll eventually push, push to your, um, it'll eventually push to your, uh, um, um, uh, it'll eventually push to your phone or your device and then you'll be able to, uh, install it at that point. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, the, check that out. It's a, it's an interesting little grid I put together and, uh, <laughs> I know you. Um, I know you have involvement with Jamf. Did you? Are you managing your families or any of your personal devices with Jamf at this point? No, yeah. I have. I do have a Jamf now account that I've played with. I don't know if you have, but uh, I played with it and then it, I gave up. But yeah, it, 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 it's it, it's too complicated for home use. Honestly, yeah, I think it's good for small. It, Jamf now is a good small business uh, application. And then, of course, there's Jamf Pro, which I I support for for business. Um, uh, if anybody's not know, familiar with Jamf is, it's Jamf J A M F dot com. I think of I've, I have talked about this on the I'm show sure many you're. times. In fact, I'm I sure. I've done I did episodes from live from the JNUC uh, conference uh, about this year, last year. So, um, and th- those tools are pretty more like an enterprise level type of of tool to manage uh, your devices. You're better off just sticking with what Apple provides, honestly. Uh, yeah, uh, I figured. I, think it's, I did try the free. They gave you a free account, and I'm like, well, maybe I could push out updates to my family and not have to worry about some of the things. And I, I, I tried it. It was just, nah, it was too much uh, to deal it with. Isn't, I mean, Pro has a lot more flexibility than Jamf now does. Right, uh, I'm but sure. A lot, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of stuff is uh, is like that. So, um, so let's uh, move on. I um. Uh, again, I, I, I fresh off of the, doing my uh, my session on Tuesday uh, with the group. Um, we had somebody ask about uh, being able to monitor audio levels using your iPhone. Because then the first thing that came up when we talked about it was the fact that, of course, you have the noise app on your watch, right? Yep. Um, well, I didn't even realize this until we, this was brought to my attention to one of one of our one of our members, uh, and. Um, and it's uh, monitoring audio levels on your iPhone. And you can use this doing the health app. We have a link in the show notes to um, actually to a, uh, a piece of the article that's in the iPhone user guide, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, and uh, it, does letting you, it does let you use the, audio, the, the health app to monitor audio levels from your headphones and sound levels from your environment. And then definitely can be helpful to understand how long and, all off, and how often you are exposed to loud volume and, and it can affect your hearing, of course. Well, with having the Apple Watch, you already have, you'll have that feature because it'll tell you right away. It'll, it'll, it'll scream at you right on your watch. And I've, I've seen it when you're going up to you know, 80, 90, 100 decibels and louder. It's, it, it's definitely going to tell you. And then um, you can, you can uh, use this with your AirPods, your AirPods and other compatible headphones with your iPhone uh, and audio levels. Uh, you also pair the Apple Watch and the Noise app will be working along with it to measure. Um, and um, it does have a more accurate, uh, the measurements are more accurate with the AirPods from the headphones connected uh, by wire. So if you are using like headphones and not AirPods, you might have a bit of better, a little better way of it measuring. Um, and then the graphs will show up in the health app. So you do have the hearing uh, hearing graph in the health app. Are we aware of this? Did you know this was uh, existed beyond just the watch? Did not. I'm looking at it now. It's pretty neat. It looks like they yeah. have the headphone, a couple different um, levels of it. They have the headphone audio levels and they have environmental sound levels, uh, basically, right. is what they have. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I've never actually gone into this all health data summary. I should. Yeah, there's a lot in there. And this, I, I thought, which is crazy um, as far as that goes. So, um, and, um, uh, speaking of, I, I just was speaking of the app, the iPhone user guide. I, I we did put a, a link in here in the show notes on this. Uh, I don't know if anybody was aware are you, that you are able to add the iPhone user guide to your home screen on your iPhone, and of course the iPad user guide can be done, done as well with having that link. Um, this guide will, the, this guide here that I linked into the show notes will actually tell you how to do it, and basically you just need to do is click the link that's provided. And then, you know, how you add to home screen by going into the share sheet and say add to home screen. And it becomes a shortcut to, to the uh, user guide. Now, they do have the user guide uh, published in, in, in the books, you know, Apple Books. Um, and you can download it. Uh, so if you wanted to have just a hard copy PDF of it, you could have it in your, in your books app and be able to read it there as well. Um, but this is, a, this is kind of like a live, always changing version of the of the user guide because of course whenever a new OS comes out they're going to update it with all the information so 
cards, which is a good thing. You don't have to have a printed copy and then have to go print it out again because it changed. <laughs> so, um, very cool. And of course, tips is still there um, related to that. If you want to get right. a short kind of a short and sweet user guide without the whole thing, it gives you a couple of tips, which is neat too. Absolutely. Yeah, there's lots of tips. and lo- lo- So even listening to what we talk about here, all the tips and tricks we give you is, um, is pretty cool in the, f- in the, in the sense that uh, you uh have an, uh, an owner's manual per se uh, to to refer back to, if you need to refer back, and then that's usually the best source of any material is uh, going right to to Apple to to learn for it. So, anything else you want to say on that? Nope, no, nope. that's uh, good stuff. Very good stuff. All right, um, so we've got some tips here. I wanted to go through, and I, and I wanted you to go, if you want to go to the to the page that we have here, that link I, that's in the notes. Um, I was going to go through a few of these, if then maybe have you uh, review them. If there's, if there's ones that you that stand out to you that you know, um, and um, the uh, the first one is uh, sending spam callers to voicemail. I mean, we've been talking about that like crazy lately because it's just these, these spam callers are just absolutely a pain, a big pain. And and Apple really has done a great job of updating this in, in iOS 13 by uh, allowing you to be able to silence unknown callers. And that's the, that's the first one you're going to block right away. If a call comes up unknown, I don't want, I'm not talking to them. It's going to make it, I'll just force it to go to the right to, to, to voicemail and block it. Um, so the, where you do is how to get to this is you have to go into settings and then you scroll down until you get to phone and then move the silence unknown caller slider uh, to on green. So that means once that's turned on, it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, turned off, and so you won't be able to get any more of those calls come through again. And it seems like it's made some improvements. Have you noticed? Uh, I don't. Know, did you have this on before in, uh, on yours? Or? Um, I'm actually still too chicken to turn it on. I'm scared I'm going to miss something that I need to get, but I will turn it on Unknown? eventually. Yeah, I don't know because. You know, once a month I'll get a, a call from an unknown caller. That's actually something I should talk to. But I guess I could always leave a message. It still goes to uh, voicemail, which is fine. So I'll, I'll turn okay. it on one day. Hey, uh, um, so our, uh, going on to our next, uh, our next tip is: um, Have you played around with uh, syncing sync lyrics in Apple Music at all? Um, I've played along with looking at the lyrics. Is that the same as? Uh, yeah, the sync lyrics. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have played with it, uh, and it's fun and it's not every song obviously, but you know, some, it isn't. some songs have it, some songs don't. And then I also found something weird where if you are playing it on your iPhone and then I started transferring, I hit the little airplay button to go to my uh, home pod, the, the lyrics don't show up. So I don't know. Really? Why. Yeah. That was kind of strange. Yeah. They, Cause they're there. They're there. If you don't do that but then if you played it on another device i do so that could be a bug or something like that but um yeah. but yeah it's fun i don't sing very well so i don't try <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, but it's actually neat to see the uh, the lyrics come on and it's actually kind of neat when you're scrolling through different songs and you know yeah. some pop up and some don't and like whoa you know you start seeing the words across the screen is kind of neat um Another tip I wanted to talk, wanted to, to, to talk about was about photos. Um, I don't know about you. Do you like, I mean, you're, you're pretty public. You like leaving your, your location and anything that you share of a photo with anybody, right? This is uh, sharing location data when you uh, share photos. You, you, you're you okay with doing that? Yeah, I, I haven't turned it off, so I'm assuming it's on. So. But um, it is great, but uh, sometimes it often contains some data embedded in the location where you took the photo, took the photo, and you may, you may not want to share that out, especially maybe social media if you're sharing a photo or, or any other place that you don't really don't want it to be public. So the way to turn that off before you share the photo, because you were gonna, you know, you're gonna pick a photo, you share it to whatever type of source you're gonna send it to. Um, you open the photos app, and then you find the photo you want to share, and then you uh, tap the photo. And then you tap the sharing icon. It's at the bottom left under that photo there. And then tap options at the top of the share at the top of the share sheet. Now on the share sheet there, you're going to move the location slider to to off, or, uh, which will be white. And that means it's going to turn off the location when it's sent. So when the fi- when the file is sent to that person, it will have no none of the none of the Bennett data will will send with it. So which is actually kind of nice because sometimes you don't want to uh, uh, to send that stuff, right? Absolutely. 
Um, I never go anywhere I'm not supposed to go, though, so it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, the uh, the other one I wanted to talk about uh, is uh, deleting apps from the app screen um, update. I'm sure you've done that many times. Yep. So uh, what are you doing from the app screen? Basically the uh, the home screen, right? Yeah. Deleting apps from the apps app up. Oh, I'm sorry. Deleting apps from the app update screen. The app update. When you're in app updates instead yep. of because if you remember before in the old, in iOS 12 and older versions, you had to uh, go into when you went into the apps update, you had to, ah, darn it, I don't want this app anymore, but I have to download it unless I go back and then go find it and then delete it. Well, yep. now just swipe. You swipe. So yep. if you when you open up the app store, you uh, take. Uh, you tap the photo or icon on, on the top right corner of that particular app that's about to be up, uh, updated. And then in, uh, in, in the available updates list, you'll find an app that you want to delete. You swipe it and to the, to the right, uh, to, to swipe right to the left across the app to reveal the delete button. You tap delete and the pop-up window will, will tap delete and then we'll move the app. So then that means uh, it's going to let you uh, do it right from the app store updates the screen instead saving you a step right yep um very cool, very cool three fingers daps does a lot two things you've done that right i have all right tell tell everybody how you do that maybe not intentionally but um yes so basically if you're doing um um if you're if you're doing a text input um, if you do these finger things, if you um, tap once, you could bring up the, the copy and paste option. And if you tap twice, you could undo your typing. Is that what it says there? Mm -hmm. And then, yep. um, so those are the shortcuts. You could, and then you could undo by shaking your phone. That's always been there. Um, so basically, it lets you pretty much um, uh, copy and paste without long pressing, I guess, is what it's doing. It used to be the long press is what you had to do right. to, to do the copy and paste, but now you can actually it's, do a it's couple a, actually, tappings. Yes, yeah, a three-finger tap. A three-finger. So, I think yeah. I said two-finger. I meant three-finger. So tapping that screen with three fingers. Okay, so with three fingers, while you're editing text, if you just tap it once, you got your copy and paste uh, menu coming up. And then if you use the three fingers, it's complicated. If you do three fingers, probably not once you start doing it, but uh, three fingers, you tap twice, you can undo is basically what, yep. what it's doing there. Um, I've probably done that a few times, but the other, um, the long press does still work. Um, I've done that too. Um, you know, even though it's not uh, force touch or whatever it's called, it still works on the, uh, on, on the phones if you want to still do the long touch. And yes. Yep. Yes. Um, another tip. Another tip is uh, a new way to move uh, the cursor. Um, on some earlier versions of iOS, uh, tapping and holding on the keyboard turned it into a laptop style trackpad, right? Which I didn't particularly care for. Did you? Um, and pinches that work pretty well, but yeah, it's it's not the best. Uh, and that that would let you move. Uh, the text insertion cursor on screen. Right. Well, that now goes a step further in iOS 13 because then you don't have to, you don't have to you forget having to use the keyboard. You just simply tap, hold, drag somewhere in a text editing area of an app. This in this in this case, the Notes app is, is one that's you probably do a lot, that a lot. It may be in Microsoft Word or any other type of editing type uh, a situation. Um, and so basically, you tap, hold, and drag anywhere in the text editing area of the app, and then you move the cursor. Uh, try it in apps like Notes and other text editors because, like I said, it'd be a much easier way to uh, to navigate through uh, your documents. So I, I, I'm assuming you've used that, used that before. Um, I'm sure I have. Um, I'm just looking again, but yeah, I've, I'm sure I've done it uh, here and there. I mean, the old ways still do work, which is holding on the space bar too, so I'm not sure if I've done it the same way. But, uh, yeah, nah, neat stuff. Good stuff. So anything, anything you've done, uh, with your device recently that's, uh, that stand out to you or you, or you just don't using it much anymore? No, I'm using <laughs> it all the time. Uh, the I one know. thing I just uh, did recently is, um, cause I've been wearing my AirPods a little bit more and I will be again. 
right. with the uh, with the new ones. Um, some people might like it, but if I'm listening to a podcast or music, I do not like the announce uh, messages feature that uh, that it does. I I find it distracting. Of, of. So basically, mm-hmm. if you have if you have AirPods um, and you go basically into settings. Uh, notifications. There's something that says announce messages with Siri, which is a new thing that I could do. And basically what it will do is if you get a a text uh, uh, iMessage or a text message, it will stop what you're listening to and say with uh, Siri's voice what the text message said. It will say, David says, and then it will send Mm -hmm. a message. Um, I turned it off because I, I find it distracting, to be honest with you, but that's a preference. And that's about it. Yeah. Yep. That's uh, that definitely a preference. Um, the, um, uh, but uh, yeah, there, it just, there's just all kinds of things that we could just keep going on with all these tips, but I thought well, we'd give you a few one juicy ones that, that, that stand out to us. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but has there been any apps that have come across your, uh, your desk as of late? I know we didn't have any listed here for you, but. Are you are you just no no not doing any new apps lately? Not a lot, but I did just see uh, uh, somewhere I saw maybe on a new show. But uh, the the shopping apps are getting hot this time of year. The um, you know the cash back ones, and I think there was a whole section in the app store at one point where if you go to apps mm-hmm. and then shopping apps, it's uh here it is. It's called Shop for the Holidays, but basically there's a. Uh, a lot of these apps now, if you sign up, you could get cash back with a lot of stuff you buy. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's, uh, it's something uh, to check out. All right. And we'll put that uh, link to that in the show notes. Um, the one app I have uh, today is uh, one that uh, stands out. Uh, we have um, the, uh, Lightroom. You use Lightroom at all for your photo editing? I don't edit photos. Uh, I you don't edit photos? <laughs> not not well. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the good thing is uh, there is a built-in the, the photo editor that's built into into um, the, uh, uh, the the photos app is great. Uh, but if for those of you who use Lightroom, this is a Lightroom five point one. This is uh, this is for iPad and for iPhone. One of the big things they added in um, in Lightroom five point one is the direct access to the SD card importing. They didn't have that before. You had to actually import it into the Files app on iPhone or iPad, um, and uh, it gave you a lot more, uh, a little bit more steps involved getting your photos into Lightroom. Uh, if anybody doesn't know what Lightroom is, Lightroom is is a is a, is a tool that allows you to do the photo editing and uh, organizing your photos uh, through the Adobe ecosystem, um, and and it scans across uh, not only your uh, iOS device, it also scans on your Mac as well. Um, and also what they did is they did add some uh, new export options. Um, I'm actually going to provide a, sh- not, not necessarily a link to the, to the actual uh, app, but, uh, I'm going to go a step further and provide a link, uh, to, in the show notes for, um, from Mac stories, our friends over on Mac stories.net. And, uh, that will have some details as far as, uh, uh, as far as that goes, uh, and, uh, uh where we're uh, going here with, uh, with Lightroom. So, Okay. We went through the show faster than I thought we would. <laughs> what do we got? About an hour? Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, the, yeah, we're about the, ten minutes short here. But uh, do you have? Did you have anything else you wanted to bring up as far as you, uh, what you've been experiencing with your iPhone or iPad lately? No, just um, you know, with the uh, the latest uh, the latest updates, things have been fine, which is a good thing. So, you know, people ask all the time, you know, should I update or should I do the update or should I do the, you know, yeah, do them. I right. mean, uh, you know, the, it's, it had, you know, per your chart, it had a rough couple of months, but I think it's it fairly did. good at this point. I have no, if somebody asked me now if they should update their iOS devices out to uh, 13, I would have no problem saying yes. So, yeah, it's, it's it took a little bit of time, but go for it. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, d- there's definitely always gonna be something. I was just gonna check see if any anybody in Mac to the Futures uh, board uh, was asking any questions. Maybe we can uh, tap um, tap upon that a little bit. Uh, um, the uh, I know someone asked about uh, the iPhone 11 Pro and the 11 is the same size. Mm, no, yeah, no. <laughs> somebody asked that, and then you know some people are having. Uh, well, somebody posted about this uh, digital article about the retro iPad. Um, 
uh, app for the uh, for iPhone. It's basically it makes it look like the old iPod. Uh, oh, I, I see this. I tried it and it was terrible. I got rid of it. So it, it looks uh, it looks terrible. Just looking at the picture. Yeah. It's, is this it's, an actual this this is an act, this is an actual app? It's an app and it's making the news now because it's it's kind of retro and it kind of looks like the. Uh, it kind of looks like the um, old iPod, and it's uh, it, it's not. So, um, yeah. So don't do that I'm one. <laughs> I'm su- I'm surprised that Apple even allows that in the App Store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, it's it's not. If you want to install it and look at it for a minute and get rid of it, uh, you could do that. Um, we're not going to talk about the Mac Pro because we don't do that, but it's uh, obviously <laughs> everywhere. It's a beast. It's a beast. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Um, I I think uh, the the latest is um, people are going to start getting it Monday is what I saw. They're going to start sh- uh, getting their um, deliveries next week. So I'm sure we'll see some articles about that yeah. and how how well that is, but. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's uh, it's been actually with uh, the updates and everything working. It's it's nice and quiet. We like that. So. Yep. All right. Well, we can wrap things up here a little early. Um, let's uh, go ahead and make sure tell everybody how they can get a hold of you as well as tell them about the Mac to the Future uh, page. And I think we, uh, if I look, if I look recently, it come, we're all getting close to thirty one hundred members here, just to this point here. Yeah. yeah we- Three thousand seventy five. Yeah, uh, I mean, once in a while we just get kind of a slew of people who um, who got recommended from somebody else uh, somewhere else, and you know, again, yeah. we we don't get rid of a lot of people unless they're you know bots or trolls, and otherwise, exactly, it's it's a good one. So it's called uh, Mac to the Future. Uh, the link's in the show. Uh, it's basically a, a Facebook group that uh, that we talked about Apple things and tech in general. Yeah. Once you're in there, you'll you'll find some subgroups that some yep. of us do, and you know uh, there are a couple that are device specific. If you want to go granular, but yeah, you can do that. And uh, I'm on uh, at at wsclore for Twitter and probably everything else. Yep. Until I change that, so that that's how you get a hold of me. <laughs> well, it's it's easy to remember. It's easy to remember. So <laughs> yep. All right, uh, all right. Let's uh, go ahead and wrap things up here. That is a wrap for this week. Uh, please send in your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address: feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at intouchwithios. You can also subscribe in our favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Stitcher Radio, Spotify, Twitter Radio, and even iHeartRadio. Or even better yet, go to our website, InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Again, Warren, thanks for being here, as always. And I'm happy to be here, and I look forward to the uh, next time. Yes, and then uh, next week we have a special programming note. We are going to have an. I'm going to have an interview with uh, Frederick Van Johnson from the uh, uh, This Week in Photo. I couldn't think of his website. This Week in Photo dot uh, com is a website. Uh, uh, that's This Week in Photo dot com, and uh, we're going to talk about iPhone t- photography, especially the, with the uh, iPhone 11 and 11 uh, Pros that are just amazing with the photography. So. So hope you, hopefully you will stay tuned for that for the next episode. And with that, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon. See ya. <laughs>